it's all going to zero against Bitcoin. It's going up forever, Warren. You're against Bitcoin, you're against freedom. Welcome to another episode of Simply Bitcoin Live, your number one source for the peaceful Bitcoin revolution, code breaking news, culture, medic warfare. We will be your guide through the separation of money and state. And make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly what we are living through these days. Today, we're going to ask a very important question. I think a question that a lot of people ask, especially if you've been stacking Bitcoin for quite a while. And the question is, how much Bitcoin do you need to retire? Well, no one really knows for sure. I released a poll later on, uh, later this morning on Twitter, kind of asking, uh, you know, what the uh, Bitcoin Twitterverse thought of what, what they thought would be a good amount of Bitcoin to retire on. Luke Broyles has also done an, an incredible job writing about this particular topic. And then, of course, we have a bunch of data and analytics just to, just to kind of give an idea of how much Bitcoin you need to retire. And then also... In regards to that question as well, it really also depends on where you live. Like if you live in South Florida or like where I live or like if you live in California, if you live in New York City, any of the big cities in, in the United States or any of the big cities in the world, right? Your cost of living is is, is going to be, uh, you know, quite a, a lot higher than, uh, than, for example, Central America. That's where a lot of Bitcoiners that I've heard are moving. They're flooding to Costa Rica. They're, they're going to El Salvador as well. And on the second part of the show, we have a very, very special guest, someone that we've been trying to get on the show for quite a while now. We have Andre Neves. He's the co-founder of ZBD. How you doing, man? Hey, man. How we doing? It's a pleasure to be here. It's an honor, actually. <laughs> man, the honor is all ours. And uh, I'm excited to uh, hear about uh, what you guys are working on at ZBD. And Opti, uh, Opti could prep us for it. Yeah, man. Well, I mean, if anyone knows my history, everyone knows I love ZBD. It's one of my favorite Bitcoin companies out there. But yeah, we're just going to we're going to do a maybe a high level view of what ZBD has to offer. We're going to show you guys the app. We're going to show you why you guys should download it. And, uh, you know, I'm sure some of you guys like to play video games and you can get sats while you do it. So I think this is a win win. But yeah, we got Andre here and he'll he'll run you through it, man. He'll show you all the features and uh, why it's a special company, in my opinion. Opinion. especially for oh, streamers yeah. like that's that's where like it plays like a a you know a really close yeah i might i might have to pick we, on you a little we, bit we, Andre. We, like we have, how do we, we have, integrate this we have to restream. integrate cbd into <laughs> simply restream. bitcoin like what what yeah. are we waiting for what's going on restream you know? restream is uh does restream have a plugin ZBD. do they have a plugin they have or something? maybe maybe after the show yeah they got this qr code thing here but like i can't figure it out so i don't know I don't know yeah, what the deal we'll is. Get some, we'll get some devs to look into it. Let's go. Oh, man. I'm so excited. ZBD plugin for Simply Bitcoin. Woo! That's well, exciting. for Restream, to be clear. It's not just for Restream for and restream. Simply Bitcoin. For Restream, and then we'll use it for Simply Bitcoin. Anyways, guys, no more delay. Let's jump straight into the show. We have a lot to talk about today. Let's hit the numbers. Let's do this. The Bitcoin Numbers. Is your Bitcoin in cold storage really secure? Is your seed phrase really secure? Stamp Seed's do-it-yourself kit has everything you need to hammer your seed words into commercial grade titanium plates instead of just writing them on paper. Don't store your generational wealth on paper. Paper is prone to water damage, fire damage. You want to put your generational wealth on one of the strongest metals on planet Earth, titanium. Your words are actually stamped into this metal plate with this hammer and these letter stamps. And once your words are in, they aren't going anywhere. No risk of the plate breaking apart and pieces falling everywhere. Titanium stamped seeds will survive nearly triple the heat produced by a house fire. They're also crush proof, waterproof, non-corrosive, and time proof. All things that paper is not allowing you to huddle your Bitcoin with peace of mind for the long haul. Stamp your seed on Stamp Seed. All right, guys, I made it super easy for you guys. You can scan the QR code on your screen right now, take you directly to the Stamp Seed website where you can use the promo code simply to get 15% off. Don't put yourself in a position where you have to explain to your grandchildren why you lost your generational wealth because you stored it on paper, store it on titanium. At the time of recording, the Bitcoin price is 36,305 sats per dollar, 2,754 block height, 817,197 blocks to having 20. 
22,803, having estimate April 20th, 2024, total Lightning Network capacity 5,291 Bitcoin, capacity value 192 million US dollars, realized monetary inflation rate 1.74%, the market capitalization of Bitcoin 710 billion dollars with a B, Bitcoin versus gold market cap 5.34%. In the grand scheme of things, Bitcoin is still a tiny little baby. Anyways, I have a video for you guys uh, to check out. This is uh, Warren Davidson. Warren Davidson is a representative in the U.S. House of Representatives, and he is extremely pro-Bitcoin. He's spoken at multiple Bitcoin conferences in Miami. And uh, this is finally, you know, he's saying the quiet part out loud because Elizabeth Warren and her media allies, specifically the Wall Street Journal, they used this uh, this BS article to uh, write a letter to the White House. And then the White House put pressure on the Treasury. And then the Treasury actually uh, proposed these crazy uh, all encompassing regulations that would basically make it that as it, how they stand and the, how the definitions are so broad that basically every single Bitcoin transaction would basically have to be reported to the FinCEN, right? So that includes single use addresses, that, that includes collaborative custody, the Lightning Network would fit under this umbrella. It's absolutely crazy, but uh, don't leave. Of course, the government's gonna take advantage or some members of the government are gonna take advantage of a crisis, the tragedy that is happening in Middle East to uh, you know I introduce or try to slip in, um, uh, you know, this tyrannical legislation. Anyways, here's Warren Davidson, and he's, you know, he's he's rebuking the claims made by Elizabeth Warren and Co. Let's check it out. My statement, but is it objectively true, Mr. Levin? Uh, thank you for the question, uh, Congressman. So when it comes to the Iranian economy, the Iranian economy does not run on the blockchain, and so that is not the well, preferred... Well, Iranian criminals or any other criminals, the U.S. dollar is the reserve currency for a reason. Uh, cash is king when it comes to illicit finance, not cryptocurrency. Is is that beyond dispute? I think Chainalysis put out a report that said it was like 0.12% of all the crypto transactions were uh, illicit, uh, and, and all crypto transactions combined are a tiny fraction of U.S. dollar transactions. So could it possibly be objectively true that the preferred currency for illicit activity is crypto? Yeah, no, so I think, uh, thank you for the question, Congressman. When it comes to the set of transactions, we said it was 0.24% of the transactions in cryptocurrency can be linked specifically to illicit activity. And yes, that's a very, very small subset of the overall transaction volume in the traditional financial system. Yeah, and so I, I just think like it's so many fallacies like that. And, you know, we can't just accept them at face value. Another one, Ms. Jimenez, Ms. Jimenez you, in your testimony, you use the presence of digital asset related SARS, suspicious activity reports, as an indication of uh, overwhelming amount of crime in the uh, digital asset ecosystem. Uh, you know, in my view, that kind of prejudges it as, uh, you know, guilty until proven innocent. Uh, I, I think the Biden family would want the uh, innocent until proven guilty, given their, their number of SARS. Uh, but uh, according to the Department of Treasury, and I quote, SARS are preliminary in unverified tip and lead information, quote. Given this important context, would it be fair to say that digital asset related SARS are actually demonstrate uh, US based exchanges are trying to comply with the BSA framework? It would be evidence that they're trying to comply, correct? Yes, however, yep. there's also enforcement Thanks. actions against numerous U.S.-based VAS for failing to file SARS. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So, I mean, look, so it came out, right, very small percentage of global illicit finance is in, you know, in Bitcoin and in shitcoins, uh, but that still didn't stop the FinCEN from, you know, using the tragedy, misrepresenting data, the Wall Street Journal article to include these crazy, crazy, crazy regulations. Now, Andre, these regulations uh, would encompass the Lightning Network. So I'm sure that it was on your radar when this happened. Uh, what's your take on all this? I mean, we've seen the uh, uh, the recent uh, move in the UK as well, right? Like the, the travel rule and how Gemini UK is only going to allow sending in and out uh, from your account to verified VASPs is the name. Uh, I think this is yet another uh, blow to, you know, just the, the usability of Bitcoin, but also um, it goes completely against uh, the, the idea that uh, Bitcoin is meant to be this sort of frictionless, permissionless system. Um, it's, it's, you know, as a regulated company in the US, it's really tough to play this, this side because on one side we have to abide by local you know regulations and jurisdictions but at the same time um, we want to pursue 
uh, more and more of these non-custodial, these self-custodial uh, properties of Bitcoin. So, um, yeah, it's a blow to, to the industry and we'll continue seeing more and more of that, right? You, we say it all the time, the government's not going to waste uh, uh, opportunities to be able to sort of curtail the system, uh, especially when they don't control. Uh, the Lightning Network is interesting because it poses a, a, a sort of an interesting problem on the technical side because we can't really see a lot of the Lightning Network information, right? You only see your nearby peers. So there is no way to go to a Lightning Network Explorer where you can see every transaction as you can on, on base layer. So it'll be interesting to see how one can enforce that type of, of stuff. Um, yeah, we'll have to see. 100%. I, I would say like their end goal here and, and Elizabeth Warren had like a Freudian slip, you know, and, uh, the, when she was <laughs> testifying in the Bennett and the Banking Senate Committee. And uh, she's saying that, you know, the the, uh, you know, the criminals are using these ever more sophisticated ways of evading money laundering by taking self-custody. Right. She's trying to connect <laughs> self-custody yeah. with crime. Uh, you could say it was a Freudian slim uh, Freudian slip. I had a live stream with Dan Pritzker, who is the co-founder and CTO of Swan Bitcoin. He said, no, Nico, that's not a Freudian slip. She did that on purpose. So I wanted to get your take on that. I mean, yeah, the the, the blatant um, sort of misnomer. They just like you had to get a representative from the House of Representatives to uh, spell it out that even in the grand scheme of things, 0.24% of transactions being illicit out of a tiny, tiny market out of the whole, like 99.9% .9 of illicit activity is, you know, uh, uh, US dollars, right? But but they just brush that aside. That's the problem, like the blatant brushing of that information aside to then say, it's crypto and it's Bitcoin and it's shit. It's like, come on, man, it's it's so blatant, right? There's no... If, if it's it's like rules for for thee not for me right that's the the saying so it's uh sad right it's really sad to, to see and, and it's hard to know what to even do like how does one move forward but it, it's definitely not a Freudian slip it's on purpose it's this is all premeditated in my opinion a hundred percent opti what's your take on all this brother yeah i mean just kind of doubling down on what andre said is it, it's really incredible to see the computer illiterate politicians out there and, and the, you know, the ABC man, the, the official authorities trying to regulate Bitcoin and whether it is a Freudian slip, whether it's just them being miseducated or whether it's nefarious, it just kind of shows that they really don't understand what is going on over here. And these are the people that are here to protect us. It's just it's really, really ridiculous when you when you kind of like wade through all of the mud and you realize what's actually happening it's like these people don't understand what is going on with this technology they don't they don't they probably don't even understand how the internet works and yet they're here to regulate the internet and it's just like these people are really dinosaurs and and they are getting out competed on the free market constantly and it just goes to show that they're trying to maintain the regulatory moat and, and nico you've been the one throughout the last couple of years to kind of hit me to politics. And you know me, I'm not that fond of politics, but having Bitcoiners be politicians, I think is a very good thing. And we're seeing this happen in real time, having Ward Davidson putting people's uh, you know feet to the fire and at the very least exposing other people to the truth of the matter that it's like, Criminals aren't using Bitcoin. The real criminals are using the dollar, guys. It, like the cash is king. And you, you guys all have seen movies. You guys know that criminals want cash. You know, only recently have you seen Bitcoin pop up in culture, popular culture as something that, uh, you know, is is untraceable and all this stuff. But it's really just goes to show that Bitcoin being such a disruptive technology movement that they will do whatever they can to gaslight us to basically make sure that Bitcoin doesn't get this mass adoption threshold because when Bitcoin does what we know it will do, all of this goes out of the window. They cannot regulate Bitcoin. They cannot stop Bitcoin and their sham gets exposed. And that is what they're most terrified of is like, oh, my goodness, if these Bitcoiners do what they say they're going to do, then our jobs are at risk. And this is what we're seeing. The politicians just playing cover for all this stuff. And, you know, whether they're nefarious or misinformed, it's all the same thing. They have no idea what they're messing with and they have no idea how to stop this. So it's just kind of beautiful to see. 
Amen. Amen. All right, guys, before we move on to news, I do want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Bitcoin 2024. It's going to be the largest Bitcoin conference on the face of the planet. You definitely don't want to miss it. It's not going to be Miami this year. It's going to be in Nashville, Tennessee, July 25th through the 24th, the year of the having. For a GA ticket, you can get it for three. 49 for an industry pass you can get it for 849 that gives you access to three days of the conference included including discounted hotel rates and of course the whale pass you can get it for 4749 that gives you exclusive access to the deep backstage vip lounge and also uh i last year i got I actually got to meet tulsi gabbard uh backstage at the, in the in the in the deep so definitely, guys, you don't want to miss this. You can use promo code SIMPLY to get a discount on the already discounted tickets to Bitcoin 2024. Get your tickets quickly before the prices increase. All right, everybody, let's hit the news. The Daily News. I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Foundation Devices. It's self-custody done right. They built a premium grade hardware wallet called Passport right here in the US. It's fully open source and verifiable. It's the most intuitive Bitcoin wallet designed with a UX reminiscent of a simple feature phone. So you will know how to navigate it and use it the moment you pick it up. Get your Bitcoin off exchanges and into your into your own hands in just a few minutes. Experience the peace of mind that comes with taking ownership of your own keys. After a massive sellout during Bitcoin Miami 2023, the passport is back in stock at foundationdevices.com. Bitcoin only, open source verifiable, completely air gap security model, gorgeous design craft, premium grade materials. If you're thinking about getting your Bitcoin off exchanges, this is the one for you. Check out the passport link in the show notes below to learn more. All right, guys, I made it super easy for you guys. You have no excuse. Take self custody of your Bitcoin. You can use the QR code on your screen right now. It'll take you directly to the Foundation Devices website. You can get yourself a passport harder wallet, not your keys, not your Bitcoin. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to ask the question, how much Bitcoin do you need to retire? First, we need to break down some numbers. First of all, how is the wealth how's the wealth uh, distributed in Bitcoin. So to be in the top 0.001%, you need a minimum of 7,000 Bitcoin. To be in the top 0.003%, you need 2,000 Bitcoin. To be in the top 0.01%, you need 400 and 433 Bitcoin. To be in the 0.03%, you need 215 Bitcoin. To be in the 0.1%, you need 89 Bitcoin. To be in the 1%, you need 15 Bitcoin. So according to this study, according, uh, and it, I forget who was actually released by, uh, that is the, uh, Bitcoin, uh, wealth, uh, distribution. And here is a clo according to, uh, Glassnode, which a lot of people use for, uh, for analysis as well, uh, for, to be a humpback, to be considered a humpback, you need, uh, it, you need, I think it's 5,000 Bitcoin. Uh, and there's only 0.001% of people that fall into that category or 220 to be a whale. You need between 1000 to 5,000 Bitcoin. There's only about 2000 people that fit into that category to be a shark. You need 500 to 1000 Bitcoin. There's only 1500 people that fall into that category to be considered a dolphin. You need 10, you need hundred to 500 Bitcoin. There's only 10,000 people that fit into that category to be a fish. You need between 50 to 100. There's only 11,000 people that fit into that category to be considered an octopus. You need 10 to 50 Bitcoin. There's only about 72,000 people to fit it, that fit into that category. To be a crab, there's one to 10. You need one to 10 Bitcoin. There's about half a million people that fit into that category. And to be a shrimp, you need uh, less than one Bitcoin. Uh, about 22 million people fit into that category. So that is the Bitcoin uh, wealth distribution, uh, according to these two separate studies. Now, here is the question that you guys all came to to uh, to to at least hope to be answered. And the, the question is, how much Bitcoin do you need to retire? Right. So let's get to it. Low income is among the reasons. Since many workers are less confident about saving enough money to retire as of 20 as of 2020 as of 2020 the median household income in the United States was 67,000 according to the Census Bureau 
At least half a million is needed for retirement, but retirees only have 191,000 saved. On average, according to a recent study by Kane Island Digital Research, the study found that average retirees spend about 48,000 annually, including on additional uh, 4,800 4, in expenses for Medicare, uh, for medical care, considering the expenditure and other factors such as the rise of inflation and outliving of life expectancy, Kane Island said that Gen Z workers would need about seven million dollars before reaching their full retirement age. Now wow. it goes on to say, given these concerns, many investors and workers are starting to look into different directions like Bitcoin and other digital assets to shore up their retirement funds on popular demand. Leading U.S. mutual uh, fund company Fidelity Investments announced in April it will provide investors with the option to add Bitcoin to their 401k. However, there were mixed reactions, of course, you know, Janet Yellen, Elizabeth Warren were not so uh, fond about that announcement. And uh, uh, it goes on to say, so how much Bitcoin needed to retire comfortably? Uh, comfortably? In the study report, Kane Island provided insight into the number of Bitcoins investors needed to retire. While the report does, does not think Bitcoin or cryptocurrency will completely replace traditional retirement savings, it suggests that Bitcoin could be an excellent option to supplement the funds following its annual percentage returns over the past years. The report assumes that the minimum, Bit, the minimum Bitcoin annual percentage return from 2023 to 2042 will be 19.6%. Based on this assumption, it recommends the following for the different age groups. By age 25, you need 2.44 Bitcoin if planning to retire at 45 years of age, with $3.9 million in savings at retirement. Having a minimum of 1.4 Bitcoin if planning to retire at age 59, with $5.6 million in savings at retirement. Having a minimum of 1.08 Bitcoin if planning to retire at 65 years of age with 6.4 million in savings at retirement. Having a minimum of 0.72 Bitcoin if planning to retire at 72, of a, 72 years of age with $7 million in savings at retirement. What about age 35? Having a minimum of 11 Bitcoin if planning to retire at 45 years of age with 2.6 million in savings at retirement. Having a minimum of 1.84 Bitcoin if planning to retire at 59 years of age with 3.8 million in savings at retirement. Having a minimum of 1.4 Bitcoin if planning to retire at 65 years of age with $4.3 million in savings at retirement, or having a minimum of 0.96 if planning to retire at 72 years of age with $4.8 million in savings at retirement. So, I mean, it doesn't sound as crazy as people would think, right? I, I you know, like we're getting close to the point that I think one Bitcoin for one person is gonna be out of reach by the time next cycle is over. But these aren't crazy, crazy amounts. 0 0.96, 0 0.72, right? So if you're at the age of 25, if you, or you're at the age of 35, these are the numbers according to this report. But of course, this is just according to this report. I also asked Bitcoin Twitter what they would think, uh, what they thought. And I said, going to do today simply Bitcoin show on how much Bitcoin do you need to retire by 2025? What is that magic number for you? The vast majority, 33%, answered 1 to 10 Bitcoin. 29% answered 10 to 20 Bitcoin. 18.4% answered 20 to 50 Bitcoin. 18.3% answered 100 Bitcoin. And I got something else for you guys, which you guys will really appreciate. This is an open source tool. Uh, shout out to Jimbo, fellow Bitcoiner. Shout out Jimbo. And uh, the project is called When Moon. And it's awesome because you can just plug in uh, specific stats that you want. You can plug in the annual inflation rate. So let's use the most recent inflation numbers. So 3.3%. Uh, the annual of uh, Bitcoin appreciation rate. I'm gonna I'm gonna pass that on to Andre. Andre, what do you think the annual appreciation rate is gonna be for Bitcoin over the next ten years? P percentage wise? Yes. Oh Jesus, thirty three. Is that too bearish? That's too bearish. <laughs> 50? 100? 100%. 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. 50, 50. 50. Final answer. 
50. Okay, so we have 50. Okay, and then your desired income in, in today's dollars. I'm going to pass that on to Opti. Opti, how much money would you want to withdraw every single year based on your Bitcoin savings? Uh, let's go six figures, 100K. 100K, so I'm going <laughs> to leave that as it is. And then uh, let's ask the audience for this. What is your stack size in Bitcoin? So drop, don't dox yourself, just drop it in the chat. Just put it in there. Put it in there. We'll pick a random number if because there is a bit of a delay. Opti, let's go with the number for 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 you. What is your uh just do one coin? Do one, one coin. coin. 100 million coins. Right, let's do with one coin. Or should we use the examples from uh from the study? Uh yeah, study. Why not? Let's do the examples from the study. So let's go. Wait, wait, do a millennial. Do a millennial cuz like who cares about okay. the zoomers? No, no, I'm just joking. Yeah. No, I, I, <laughs> We're, we're, we're all millennials here. I'm okay. trying to figure right. this out for myself. Okay, so uh, let's do age 35 and then planning to retire. Okay, let's so let's do the 1.84 Bitcoin. Let's do that. All right, yeah. here we go. So 1.84 Bitcoin. So your personal moon date, if your stack size is 1.84. Wait, show it, Nico. Show it. You're on the oh, other page. Sorry about that. If your stack size is 1.84 Bitcoin, and your you want to take out a hundred thousand, and the annual uh, inflation rate in the U.S. the last print was three point three, and the annual Bitcoin appreciation rate is fifty. Which, by the way, I agree with Andre. That is a bit bearish. Bitcoin's <laughs> annual appreciation rate yeah. so far has been two hundred fifty percent. Exactly. Um, so we're we're being so we're being conservative. We're being very conservative. The moon date be. 2027 let's that's, go that's Holy when shit. you'd be able to start withdrawing uh wow. and you'd be able to live out your life right so, so by next cycle amazing yeah yeah so this We're is all sitting here like oh shit this okay is a, this is an awesome <laughs> open source tool i'm gonna put it in i'm gonna put it in the video description so you Sick. guys uh can uh play, play around with it uh, but I want to get your guys' thoughts. I want to, I, I want to open up the conversation. Uh, what did you guys think of these numbers? Were you guys, uh, a little bit let down? Were you guys feeling optimistic about it? Uh, what's your guys' take? So I'll start with Andre first. Well, I thought it was just kind of bearish. You know, <laughs> I thought if I, I thought if someone had five Bitcoin in five years, that is a, should be a significant more amount of money. Uh, in my opinion, not money, but like purchasing power, right? Like value. And and just the last one, if what was it? If you had 2.84 Bitcoin, you could retire in four years. So if you have five, like, uh, yeah, I think, and, and it's still bearish. Uh, I think it would let, be a let, lot let, more. let's play around. Let's, let's, let's have some experiments, right? So if you have five Bitcoin, right? Uh, your moon date actually is like next, next year, next year, <laughs> next year. <laughs> Uh, this is so bad for our mental health. Oh man! Oh god! And no. then it gets pretty all Bitcoiners crazy. about so to start flexing in the chat. So, so if you know, if it was ten Bitcoin, your moon date it's already happened. If already you happened, you can if stop you have working. Twenty Bitcoin, it happened two years ago. <laughs> so yeah, man. This all right, is here, a Nico. We got someone in the chat. How about someone who is sixty-eight? Let's uh, let's up this. How okay. can we do this? 68. Okay. So let's do the calculation. So 68, uh, are they going to drop how much Bitcoin they have? No, no, don't dox them. Do, don't dox yourself. Just just do like one Bitcoin or something. I don't know. Okay. One Bitcoin. Do a couple. No. What, what's the like, how much? He's 68. So what? He's a, he's a boomer. Uh, what, what was the numbers in the, the, uh, the, that first article? Like how much is the average boomer? Oh, you wanna, okay. Do you want to go? Okay. So you want to go. So it was like 500 K or something yeah, like that. You want to go here. Okay. So at age 35, no, no, if, go down. I think the other one, is there another one? Yeah, there you go. Oh, wait, there's a chart. There's a chart right, right here. Yeah. Yeah. So retirement. Oh, wait. So it back. tells you how much Bitcoin you need by age for specific countries. Very, very cool, according to this data. But I do recommend using this open source tool the most because uh, you can have the most amount of funds with it. And of course, if you want to send some sats to Jimbo for coming up with this. Oh, sorry, sorry awesome. guys. Not a boomer. He's a Gen Xer. My bad. 
Awesome, awesome tool. Okay, but I mean, let's uh, let's see if someone put a number in the chat, and then we'll move on to the culture to talk about ZBD and Andre. All right, all right, Nico. Um, while you're while you're looking in the chat, um, drop a number, I, I guys. Want, drop want, a Bitcoin number. I want my number. take on this. Uh, of course, of course, guys. You need six point one five for eternal riches, and you guys know the let's rest of the that. memes. So. Let's do that. Six point one five. But but seriously, um, I I kind of don't believe in retirement. I, I kind of have the view like retirement is a scam. Uh, we have to keep ourselves busy, you know, keep ourselves sharp because then you just start to dwindle. I, I've seen so many studies on, uh, you know, uh, elderly people that like once they retire and once their spouse dies, they're just like they're gone in like nine to like two years, nine months to like two years. And it, it's it's absolutely incredible how just like keeping yourself busy makes you live longer. And I know we all are trying to opt out of the rat race and. I think we I think we can kind of connect both of these where it's like, look, I think keeping yourself sharp and on purpose and, and building into your old age can be worthwhile. But also, uh, you know, I just I don't fully believe in retirement, I think. Uh, but anyways, if I'm going to answer the question of retirement by 2025, I kind of chose that like 20 to 100 range. And you guys can say I was being bearish, but I was doing these numbers based on like six figure price. Uh, predictions and basically being like at least a multimillionaire or a decamillionaire. I think that's like kind of what you need to be live a very nice life a, in today's world. And I think some of these numbers here were actually very, very surprising. Uh, what did it say? Like retirement for average uh, boomer or Gen Xers? Like uh, what was it like at the high, like $500,000. So if that's true, then it's like two to five coins right now. And again, like I, I for. I think we forget how big numbers work and just like how bullish, even when we're bullish, we're still bearish in regards to how Bitcoin's price will appreciate. And it, it really just like blows my mind. And then just being, you know, doubling down. We, I am a millennial. I know a lot of our friends are millennials. And it's just like for us young people of normal means, like we got time to just continue stacking, continuing providing value, continuing to build businesses. And I, I, I think we're really going to be surprised by how little Bitcoin we need to live a good life moving forward. And those numbers in that first article you pulled up were, were absolutely incredible. Like, People retiring on so little money, it's it's actually incredible and sad at the same time. So like maybe, maybe we're all just super greedy and they're like, I want to be a multimillionaire when I retire at 40 years old. Uh, but I don't know. I, I think the the saying that we always say and every it's kind of like the common meme here. It's like just get to a coin, guys. Hoddle that coin for a long time and you're gonna be extremely well off. Of course. No, I mean, but let's run that experiment. Let's run that experiment. Let's let's take the greedy route because we have been, you know, it's slightly conservative. So and then we'll move on to the culture segment because I really want to talk about CBD. I really want to talk about what Andre is working on these days. So let's be extremely greedy. Let's have a instead of a hundred thousand dollars, a five hundred thousand dollar uh, withdrawal. Right? So your moon day, year. your $500,000 a year with a annual Bitcoin appreciation rate, even with just 0.69 Bitcoin, your moon date would be 20, 30. Damn. It's crazy what happens when you live on a deflationary standard. And let's say you have one Bitcoin. Cause I think that was the general consensus of what we wanted to plug in your moon day if the annual bitcoin appreciation rate continues at 50 percent a year if the u.s inflation rate stays at three percent and you want to take out five hundred thousand dollars a year to live right you want to live like a king like opti said uh your moon day would be 20 30 so about 10 years from now bitcoin it's an actual appreciation rate like what did you say it was 150 200 or something uh, 250 historically uh your personal your uh your appreciate your moon day Dude, would actually that's be crazy Oof. two years wait, from wait. Now, 2025. everyone in the chat too much moon boy math <laughs> <laughs> yeah so f f uh have fun with wait, the, wait, have fun with this open people source. are asking for the i i did drop it in the video description but yeah, i will yeah. drop it in the chat as well so you guys can check it out i really recommend you send jimbo some sats if you guys are having fun with it um, but yeah, that is, I hope that answers your question when, uh, you know, how much Bitcoin you need to retire. It's not as much as you think. And the reason for that is because it's sound money. There's absolute scarcity. 
and uh, it's deflationary rather than inflationary. So all of a sudden, it's not a question of will I be able to afford something? It's a question of how long do I need to work? I mean, how long do I need to wait in order to afford that certain thing? Um, so yeah, Bitcoin is awesome. This is why we're all here. And uh, imagine the whole world on this deflationary mindset. I really think the world would be a better place. Anyways, I know it's the Friday episode. We <laughs> moon boy end math on Friday with some, with some moon moon boy math. But hey, we didn't we didn't claim anything. We didn't say anything. Whatever you can plug in whatever numbers you want there. You can be extremely conservative with that calculator and you can plug in uh, whatever data that, that you want. Anyways, everybody, let's get to the culture so uh, we could talk about uh, ZBD and Andre. But before we get to that, I do want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Kaboom Rex. They're the most trusted place to buy, sell, and host mining equipment. You can scan the telegram. You can scan the QR code on your screen right now. It'll take you directly to their Telegram marketplace, where you can connect with a member of their sales team. They make purchasing their products easy and transparent. You could also sell mining equipment with them. Access their vast network of domestic and international customers when you sell your mining equipment with them. Start your Bitcoin mining utopia today with Kaboom Rex. All right, everybody, let's hit the culture. Let's do it. Here we go. The Daily Culture. Brought to you by SwanBitcoin.com. Swan is the best way to build your Bitcoin stack with automated Bitcoin savings plans and instant purchases, serving clients of any size from $10 to $10 million. We love Swan because they incentivize self custody and dollar cost averaging. What are you waiting for? Visit SwanBitcoin.com today. All right, guys. You already know what we do here on The Culture. We have Andre Neves of ZBD. In my opinion, I am biased here. One of my favorite Bitcoin companies because I use it so much and it's really, it's so much fun. Anyways, we'll, we'll, we'll touch on that in the end. Andre, for people that aren't aware of what ZBD is, what is ZBD and what are you working on? Yeah, so ZBD is a very multifaceted company, uh, but at, at our core, we empower people with Bitcoin capabilities. <laughs> Right. So what we do is <laughs> oh, <laughs> we empower people with Bitcoin capabilities. Uh, so whether you're a business, uh, a API, sort of a developer, a game developer, a consumer, um, even just a newcomer to Bitcoin, uh, you should encounter ZBD in your journey. So on on the gamer side here, on the user side, what you're showing on the screen is our ZBD.gg website. So this is talking about the ZBD app. Uh, which is one of the three facets, right, of, of the business. And uh, this is the entry point for everyone to get started with Bitcoin. Uh, this is the simplest way to onboard uh, what we like to call uh, those, you know, we, we Bitcoiners call them pre-coiners. The majority of Z ZBD users are folks that don't actually have any uh, experience with Bitcoin, right? So we're onboarding a massive use user base of gamers, of general mainstream, you know, uh, audience and so the idea here is to give them that first experience, that first aha moment where they come in and they're doing something incredibly familiar, like playing video games on their phones, like playing mobile games like they always do. Um, you know, whether you're going on a subway to your work or whether you're stuck in traffic, like people do this already. Um, so the idea is let's onboard them into Bitcoin a little bit like a Trojan horse uh, meme that we like to use. Right. So um, the way this works is you play a bunch of games uh, from inside of the ZBD app. There's a bunch of other stuff too. There's we have surveys, we have offers, we have games, we have uh, uh, extensions, which we'll talk about. Uh, but the idea is every everything inside of the ZBD app is about earning Bitcoin, right? So instead of uh, having this risk on appetite for Bitcoin, which is very uh, you know I have to go through these hurdles to acquire Bitcoin, um, you don't have to do that, right? You can get involved with Bitcoin by earning it, and it's it's risk free. You just earn it and you get your first few sats. Um, and you know, the games can go from little mobile games all the way to, you know, Counter-Strike, right? So CS, CS go was our first, um, you know, uh, triple A title game, uh, that we did in early 2021. Uh, and CS2 is, is a big, you know, question mark for everyone. When, when are we doing infusing CS2? Uh, so, uh, but you know, this is, this is a reality now and with ZBD, you can participate in tournaments and events. You can earn sats. Um, and then, of course, on the other side, um, developers, game developers and developer partners 
uh, use ZBD's lightning infrastructure, API infrastructure to power these experiences, right? That, that's the idea, right? We empower uh, users and developers with money capabilities online. Um, and then uh, to touch on the, the favorite uh, uh, product that Opti kept talking about. Uh, it's so literally ZBD my favorite. Is, <laughs> yeah. So the ZBD uh, product suite is meant to be all encompassing, right? So if you're if you're a consumer of uh, nowadays something like Venmo, for example, Venmo works everywhere, right? You can send Venmo to everyone. You can you use it to pay stuff. PayPal is the same thing. So if you're going to introduce a new fee, a new type of of money, a new capability, it has to be everywhere. So we use this tagline: ZBD is with you wherever you are as a user, right? So if you find yourself on the phone, on the go, we're there on the phone, mobile, iOS, or Android. If you're on, on your computer, we have a browser extension, right? If you're uh, on Discord chatting with your friends or on Telegram, uh, you know, Benter talking about crypto and Bitcoin and stuff like that, then we have a, an extension for that. And then if you're a streamer, um, this is what we do with the ZBD streamer. We allow you to plug into, uh, you know, we're not tied to a platform. We allow you to plug into any OBS or stream elements or whatever platform you use. Um, and I guess Restream is one we need to look into. Uh, which allows you to put a QR code uh, in the screen. Uh, your your audience members can tip you in sats. There's a super chat with all the messages that appear, and you can even hook in gifts and sounds that that show up uh, in the middle of the stream. So it's really a way to interact and break that fourth wall between the user and the audience member participating in your live stream. Um, you know, a lot of gamers use it as one. They tip you. You get to see the chat, um, and it's it's there's more. Uh, right to your to your engagement in the to the user um, and to, to the streamer. So uh, it's one of our favorite products too. There's a lot of updates coming, lots of Nostr things coming to that uh, in the future. But so that's a bit of the the ZBD uh, product suite. Awesome, awesome. Dude, it, it, Wait, Nico, before you go, uh, Andre, one of the things that I, I have so you, many you questions. Keep going. You, you can keep going after this. I, I just kind of <laughs> want to comment here because I, I think it's no. it kind of goes into what we always talked about. And we talked about this at Pacific Bitcoin. It's the idea of breaking the echo chamber of, uh, you know, Bitcoin. We're, we're always talking to Bitcoiners. And what I really like is how you guys have been more gamer focused than necessarily just being like Bitcoin maxi focus. And I think it's just like it's so obvious to me that gamers and Bitcoiners, like they should be one in the same thing. Like I, I believe all <laughs> video games should have the, like ways to get sets. And like, it just seems so, it, it's, it seems so intuitive. And it just amazes me that game developers just haven't like caught on to this idea that like, yo, adding real money to your video game yeah. will probably incentivize more users than these fake tokens that are a part of every video game. We used to use a tagline, uh, real economies in virtual worlds. Like, what, you know, we, we talk about, I love that. We, wow. we talk about uh, nation state monies and how we shouldn't use those and we should use a better money. So then, um, like, what if, what if it's a, <laughs> 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 Shut up, PT Huddle. <laughs> yeah. Um, why, why would we want different monies for virtual worlds? You know, like, why do I need V Bucks for Fortnite? Why do I need gold for a while or the work, right? Like, we should just have a medium of exchange or like it should be frictionless, right? To use this type of stuff. So um, that's our thesis as well in, in video games. And it, it's it's the norm and uh, it's growing really fast. It's just that uh, video games take uh, much longer than, uh, you know, MVP apps to build, right? G game devs do a lot of testing and stuff, but there's a lot of big titles launching in the next couple, uh, couple weeks and months. So uh, pretty big announcements to the end of the year, um, you know, all over. So. We should see some fun stuff. Love it. So th this is incredible. Look, I am an Opti knows this. I'm a bit of a nerd. He's like, a gamer. I, I, Low key, I, Nico's I, a gamer. I play. I play. Yeah, because I have. So like in between meetings and whatnot, I have like, I don't know if I could show this, but I have a little monitor here, yeah. you know, and I got my I got my little set Nico's a FIFA right? and, actually you know, win FIFA over there and with I, ZBD. And, 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 I, and I play and I play. No, no, no. But let, let's take it. Let's zoom out a little bit. Right. So and I play in between meetings or whatever, you know, I, I, Pull up my controller, play a game, a game, game of FIFA, and whatever. Um, it, it, do you see this eventually going to AAA games? Right? Like, yes. do you do you see? Because because it's so obvious. Like, it's so because you have the fake in game. I mean, it, it's just like monopoly money that they give you. Mm -hmm. Like, why can't it be Bitcoin? It's so <laughs> obvious. Yeah. So, the, it, what's your take on that? So. There's a lot of things I can't say. Uh, the short answer is yes. Uh, AAA titles are all over this. Um, 
you know, one one thing that you need to understand is uh, the market was sort of took a big hit uh, with regards to the big wave of adoption for crypto and NFTs and all of that, right? There's there's now a kind of a big blowback from that. So there's a lot of companies in general from, from, a, from a company and brand standpoint that are very wary of attaching themselves or, or connecting themselves to something that is uh, highly political and politicized. So there's a bit of that, right? So sometimes conversations just don't go forward because of the, the negativity, the stigma around it. Um, but those that do go forward, uh, and there are plenty, and, and again, I can't disclose much, but stay tuned till the end of the year because big things are coming. Um, Triple H students all know of Bitcoin and they all understand Bitcoin is part of the conversation now. They understand, like we power the biggest Web3 title in the market, right? Like which, which has millions of, of monthly active users and it's all in Bitcoin. They like to call it Web3, but it, it's Bitcoin. It's Bitcoin rewards that deals with the whole thing. So. Um, it's here and it's going to, it's only going to grow. And I think the second we get a, a hit doesn't even necessarily have to be a triple A title in this, but like something like among us, right. Which is a game that explodes and all of a sudden it has a viral hit. Uh, I think every developer is going to start to have to answer the question of why not Bitcoin it's right now. The question is why Bitcoin. And I think once there are bigger hits, mm. it'll be like, why shouldn't we use Bitcoin? Right. The same way that when people put Bitcoin into their balance sheet. It wasn't like, should we put Bitcoin to the balance sheet? Is it became why 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 shouldn't we? You know, we flipped the conversation a little bit. So, again, stay tuned till the end of the year. Uh, there's there's things coming. Uh, it's, it's very exciting. Yeah, and, and and I think you brought up a really good point, right? Which is the fact that it doesn't necessarily need to be a triple A studio that adopts this first. It could be an indie studio, yeah. right? That adopts it. And all it needs is for the game to take off, like triple uh, No Man's Sky, for example, yeah. you know, um, yeah. they terrible launch, but, you know, they got their <laughs> stuff together after the fact. Yeah. Um, but, you know, now it's that's, you know, it won a ton of awards, very well respected. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, all it takes is that just one there's, indie developer. Yeah, go ahead. There's, hun there's hundreds of apps and games in the platform now at this point. So Z as the ZBD app will show you all of them. Um, and what's fascinating is gaming is definitely the, you know, the focus and the bread and butter and where we've been focusing all of our efforts. Um, but the reality is that folks kept knocking on our door like, hey, I want to power my other thing that isn't a game, but it's an app with this. And I want to do my Noster social thing over here with you guys. And I want to do this. So um, we actually had to open the developer dashboard up for everyone. Right. So you can go to the Z Zebedee IO dashboard and sign up and just like you can. Um, with with something like stripe.com to receive your fiat payments you could use it with zbd by just you know accepting it so uh we power fountain which is the biggest podcasting app uh that accepts you know value for value and things like that so um it's it's really big the platform is now processing millions and millions of transactions uh on a monthly basis and so it's it's fascinating to watch the growth of lightning as well so Awesome. And we're huge fans of, of as content creators, uh, we're huge fans of Fountain. Opti and his is, is uh, with Bitcoin Kindergarten. with pet with project. Mine. Guys, yeah. uh, like, which, uh, someone, uh, Roman in the chat was asking, like, how do I do this, this uh, streamer kit with OBS? Guys, it's super simple. You literally copy a URL over to your OBS and you can use all of the features and you can basically bypass the YouTube super chat feature and just have your audience directly stream you sets and met meta metaphorically bypass. Yeah, 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 yeah. Metaphorically. As an experimentation, we're not saying we're going to do that YouTube, yeah. but Opti was just saying that <laughs> that could be done hypothetically. Well, and, well, there's a there's a very very and I I told Andre this in person before. The one of the cool things about it is like you don't need to have a huge following to be able to monetize your stream with the ZBD streamer kit. You literally if yes. you have one or two viewers, they can stream you sets and so now and now at the point of the show where we're like, all right, after the show we're going to try to figure out how we integrate this with the restream so that we yeah. can also add QR code cuz everyone yells at us like, "Oh, you're not taking lightning QR code." And I'm like, "I yeah. can't figure it out with restream yet." So, and and what I think to to follow up on your point up to what I think is fascinating is uh the fact that it you don't need a lot to be able to monetize your content online is really important because uh, up to this point, unless you're a big following type of Instagram influencer or Twitch influencer or some per some gamer online, like you need to have a large fan base to be able to monetize that effectively. And you need to go through many hoops and, and ways. 
with with the ZBD stack of products, you can do that yourself. If you're a streamer, you do that yourself. You keep 99% of the gains. We only take the 1% so we can pay some routing fees and lightning, right? Um, apart from that, you can you can receive it and you can withdraw to your wallet like immediately. We don't we don't want to keep your funds. That's besides the point. Um, and now we're opening up our social experience on the app. So the ZBD app is also a full blown Nostra client. So you can zap, you can post, you can upload photos. We have a tight integration with Wavelake for music, uh, so you can zap directly. We have an integration, a tight integration with Geezer Fund, uh, Geyser Fund, so you can tip, uh, donate directly to projects. Like, uh, and all of this is powered by Nostra, right? So a user can come in, someone that doesn't understand anything about Bitcoin, doesn't understand anything about Lightning, they, and doesn't understand anything about Nostra, but wants to see the value in it, right? We believe in the show, don't tell. Um, to the general folk, telling them about the benefits from a technical standpoint of why you should use a decentralized social network is too big, it's too broad. We need to start by showing them the value. So get them in and they have a familiar experience. They can their Google Google, with their, with their uh, Apple accounts, whatever, or even an email, they, that's familiar. They're in, they start learning about Bitcoin, they earn their first sats, they play some games, they zap some friends, they participate in some DMs and some zapathons. And then it's like, okay, there's value to this. I want to learn more. Great, go deeper. They will always come to Zebedee because Zebedee is where they come in for games, for, for earning Bitcoin, for interacting with friends. But uh, we hope that they push forward into the journey of the rabbit hole where they come in and and download their non-custodial wallet, right? Because they want to understand, right? Download their, their, their uh, buy a, a node, right? Like run a fucking node. Everyone should run a node. We run multiple nodes, right? So I think it's a stage, but we can't onboard everyone with by giving them 24 word seed phrases. We have to onboard them by meeting them where they are. And so there are plenty of companies building Bitcoin products for Bitcoiners. And I use all of them, right? I'm, I'm a user. We support open source work. We are big supporters of all over the place. Um, but someone needs to build products for the non-Bitcoiners that need to become Bitcoiners. And we can't make them Bitcoiners by just yelling Bitcoin in their face, right? So we need to show them the value. Uh, and that's what the ZBD app is hoping to do. Ooh, I talked yeah. a lot, oh, yeah, dude. Man. Sorry. Love that. it. Well, any any last, no, no, any last no. words, bro? Keep it going. Rip it, bro. Rip it. I'm just upset that Opti still, you know, still hasn't figured out how to incorporate it into Simply. Dude, bro. Like, IQ Bitcoiner. Chill out. W WTF, man. WTF. <laughs> no, yeah. It's cool. If you want to check it out, uh, head over to zbd.gg for the app and then zebedee.io for the for the dashboard um, and we can get you in and you can you can do it all by yourself. Power any experience with, Z, with ZBD API. We have a dope uh, developer dashboard and API documentation. So, and for anyone that you want to onboard into Bitcoin and Nostr, have them download ZBD so they have an easy experience. And then as they go down the rabbit hole, you onboard them to other experiences, right? As they go deeper and deeper. Hell yeah. Love it. And just I to be clear, that. Andre, for the audio listeners, this is for iOS and Android, correct? Correct. Yeah. We'll continue to have some, you know, hurdles with iOS. We'll continue fighting those, but yes, correct. iOS and Android at the moment. Let's go. Awesome. Awesome. All right, everybody. Uh, let's hit the memes. We got a lot of memes to review. Let's do it. The daily meme review. All right, boys and girls, mainly boys, but some girls shouts out to the girls that hang out with us. This is the meme review where you guys tag us on Twitter at Simply Bitcoin TV or or you guys forget about the or you drop them in our Telegram group t.me slash Simply Bitcoin TV. As you guys know, the loyal listeners here tweet to the bullets memes of the artillery. We are in an information war. I say it all the time. We got to ridicule the corporate press. We got to get the calls of actions to get people on Bitcoin like what Andre is doing with Zebby D. And of course, you got to make them funny humors to keep your friends' heads in the game. And you know me. Uh, I do my best to avoid nepotism on the meme review because I, I, I don't want to hear you guys yell at me that, oh, you're just putting your own memes in there, bro. Uh, but I got yelled at on the opposite side. So shout out to Matthew J. He's like, yo, you guys need to put your own memes in the meme review more often. I'm like, okay, uh, here we are. Okay, so... First meme is by us, Simply Bitcoin, and it goes, uh, World War Three is an information war. You are the front lines, Anon. Get people to exit with Bitcoin. Get people to download Bitcoin wallets. Get people to save in Bitcoin. And then the meme is 
tweets are the bullets, memes are the artillery. This is an information war. And we got Nico. You probably know this better, but I'm pretty sure this is uh, Dragon Ball Z. And it goes, he's speaking the language of gods. <laughs> tweets are the bullets, memes are the artillery, guys. You are frontline soldiers. Okay. Next one is by Boomer, a.k.a. at the rulers broken. He goes, a huge shout out to Sessions, Wicked, Smart, Bitcoin, Boomer, BTC, M1K3, and any other pleb who warned me and tagged me at Optimus Fields for the meme review. And we got this guy. I don't know what show this is, but it looks like it's on AMC. And uh, it's a big boy sleeping on a lot of dollars. And it goes, plebs who merged the UTXOs when fees were low. I hope you guys are going to consolidate your UTXOs. I, I've been warning you guys for a minute that you need to consolidate your UTXOs. And now the wizards and the ordinals are clogging the mempool and now fees are getting crazy but soon it'll it'll get a little less crazy and you might have one more chance before there is a lot of demand on the bitcoin network okay the next one is i raise you btc shouts out to you and he goes uh nico opti let's see which neighbor in my building gets it and you can see here it is his wi-fi hotspot and it goes btc or slavery true mvp and when i saw this last night i'm like dang I need to do something like this, but uh, I'm just afraid of um, someone no, knocking dude, on I'm my door. I'm not going to my wife. Dox my wife. <laughs> I know. This guy's crazy. But absolute legend. Okay. I th- I'm going to, like, I think my Wi-Fi network is called Fiat Maximalist. Nice. Um, dude, very good yeah, OPSEC. Dude. Very good OPSEC. Okay, this next one. Shouts out to Top Roller, a.k.a. at Stacking underscore top roller and he literally dm me and he's like yo uh before this makes ways and you guys think this is real this is a fake news headline but anyways he goes yo guys you seeing this and we got this uh fake news cnn headline it goes twitter x space is a hot spot for anti-government crypto hackers oh my god it's so good that like you wouldn't even have known that this wasn't a fake headline this is what we're seeing constantly coming out of the corporate press okay next one is the btc therapist and he goes this is the way hashtag btc and we got what's it mark Wahlberg, and he goes when everyone is saying they're going to keep buying the dip and he's got a confused face and we're like, with what money who's <laughs> who has money still are you like you guys uh, what are you waiting for 12k i'm I'm out of fiat. I'm out of dry powder. I wish I was a smarter trader, but I capitulate my fiat instantly. Okay, this next meme is by Bitcoin for Freedom, aka BTC for Freedom, BTC underscore four underscore freedom on Twitter. And it goes, hashtag Bitcoin shields you from the elite's greedy hands. And we got the 300 with their shields (laughs) getting ready. And protecting themselves. Okay, the next one is by RD underscore BTC. And he goes, you okay there, buddy? And shout out to Andre. He he literally talked about this in the culture. Uh, and he goes, when you ask your shit corner friend how his NFT collection is going, and he's like, yeah, I'm probably absolutely wrecked and decimated. This is why we are Bitcoin only. And the last one, since we are getting close to Thanksgiving, and I'm sure you guys are going to have these conversations. Shouts out to Zach, aka at underscore base underscore money. What's up, Brony goes at that point. It's that point in the cycle where ridicule works best. Let the orange pilling commence. And we got Willy Wonka here and he goes, Bitcoin is money for smart people. You wouldn't be interested. (laughs) The complete opposite of what we talked about in the culture. Be nice to the pre corners. We want them to get on the Bitcoin network and. Uh, you know, calling them idiots isn't the best marketing route, guys. You know, (laughs) get them involved somehow. But you know, Bitcoin is going to Bitcoin. So here we are. Anyways, drop your meme review score in the chat, guys, as we review hours lives. All right. My Nico is uh, it's this glass jar with my water in it. It it did hold pomegranate juice, but now it's become my water jar. I, I'm I'm learning, Nico. Avoid plastic as much as possible. Yeah, I, I was an Essentia Maxi and then Opti would. Guilt hey, me. he yeah. gets it. It's the best water. It's, it's the best water in the world. The bottles are just great size. I'm not going to lie. So, what are you gonna do? And then, and then Opti was like, "No, the plastics, the plastics, the plastics, so bro. The microplastics, bro." I invested in a, a, a filter that makes what you get the water taste. Did you get like, a Berkey? 
I got no. I got like the Kooligan, bro. Like ultraviolet, like all the, you, the is whole nine Is it a yards, smart man. one? Does it have an app that you can connect to? If it doesn't, yes, it's the whole thing. Do you, you, you remineralize it. it with salts or Dude, what? The the entire because I look Essentia is like the gold standard. That water tastes so good. So then my girlfriend's like, no, the plastic. And my fiance, she gets it. Like no, the plastic, get to it. the plastic, the plastic. And I'm like, fine. I will move from Essentia if the water tastes exactly the same out of the filter. <laughs> So yeah, we just we invested in uh, in the filter. Guys, and, uh, stack yeah. sats, sats first. Invest in your water <laughs> second. You need clean water. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> Andre, <laughs> I already I just that was my meme score. That was my meme yes. score. My my I think what the brand is like Cooligan filters hey, hey, or something like that. Shield, Nico. Cool, cool, <laughs> hooligan, 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 hooligan. Uh. My meme score is a limited edition ZBD lighter. We made like a, a dry run, like 10 of these, maybe 20 of them. And then this is all busted up too. It's all used. Um, wow, doc. Yeah. So you got the, you got the proof of work in there. <laughs> got the proof of work in there. Anyways, guys, if you want to support the show, check out our merch. You can scan the QR code on your screen right now. It'll take you directly to simplybitcoin.com. You can get yourself a Simply Bitcoin shirt or a Simply Bitcoin hoodie. Help uh, help support the show. Get some of our merch while supplies last. Anyways, Opti. And, and to the giveaway Epic. people, uh, we'll, we'll handle that hopefully this weekend. We'll get that out to you guys. Hopefully this weekend. I mean, I mean we'll I, handle I, it this I, weekend. I, I meant to say <laughs> hopefully we ship it out this weekend. So okay. we're, we're going, we'll get that to you by next week. Oh man. Okay. All right. The music. There we go. All right. Elaine. Uh, she gives her score is after the 2024 U.S. Bitcoin states and countries around the world welcome millions of wealthy Bitcoiner early retirees. <laughs> Elaine, always the best score and also winner of the giveaway. She won herself a short turn up hodl meme score whole and pub key out loud still typing. Wait for it. <laughs> Phil C, I give the memes my moon date of October 2025. Let's fucking go. Awesome. Uh, Nigel, I give the memes a jacket half as good as Opti's, and that's still you a really like good that jacket. jacket. Oh. Yeah, so that shit's fresh, right? Okay, okay. Very fancy, very fancy. All right, Elaine, after the you after 2024, wait, 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 you, US, uh, you said that. You said that. All right, Tom Red Eye, I give the memes a palace 8.65. Okay, okay. Okay. Um, the next one. Uh, skip down the road. Meme score. There was a young lady from Des Moines who became a big fan of Bitcoin. She hated politicians and bankers and all the altcoin wankers and dreamed of kicking Gary Gensler in the groin. All right, chat GBT I, uh, to, to, to rhyme it, I guess. Igor, I give the memes a haystack with no needle for no coiners to search. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, read this one and then I I'm I need to read some. Wait, all right, all right, all right. But turn off the music. Okay, turn off okay, the music. Yeah. Let me let me read the right, one. Hold on. Pull up the score. No, let pull me read it score. from pull let up. me read it from Rumble because they're getting mad at me because I keep forgetting. So we have one here by John Pleb and he goes meme score Bitcoin. Wait, no. Can I even say this one? Bitcoin performing erotica by Madonna. Give it up. Do no, as I say. No, give it up. Ah. Let me have my way. I'll give you love. Uh, <laughs> all right, sorry. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> okay, one one last score by Opti's digital ID, Mr. Opti's field, uh, field container boyfriends. My price to use ZBD just went up. To give Peachy a hundred and sixty nine percent raise. Also, she's the best Bitcoiner. Shout out to Peachy. Uh, no comment. Shout out to Peachy. No comment. Uh, no Love comment. Peachy. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning into another episode of Simply Bitcoin Live. I'm your host, Nico. It's my legendary co-host, Opti. I want to thank our very special guest, the one, the only, the legendary, Andre Neves of ZBD. Guys, check out ZBD.io. I pulled it up on screen for you guys. Andre, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Thanks, everyone. It's been an honor. We'll see you next time. Appreciate, appreciate it. All right, everybody, if you guys enjoyed the show, smash that like button. Consider subscribing if you feel like we provided you value. But the number one thing you could do to help push the peaceful Bitcoin revolution, share Bitcoin content, share Bitcoin culture, share Bitcoin projects, share it all. That's how we really, really win this thing. Love you all. Everyone enjoy their weekend and we will see you on Monday for a brand new episode of Simply Bitcoin Live.